Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is a show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. This is the fifth and final map in the Beginningville mapping competition. It is called Evasion by George Campbell. So let's jump in and have a look, shall we? So, I suppose I should preface this video by saying that this map was a late entry into the competition. It wasn't originally going to be part of it, but Philip allowed it in at the last minute. Um, and it kind of looks like the author just kind of ran out of time working on the map, like perhaps real life happened as it so frequently does, and uh, because the map just feels extremely half-baked. Like there's, there's a lot of areas that we can talk about as we see them that just kind of are just completely unfinished essentially. But uh, we start off in this burning building, and uh, there's a couple of things that li little niggles really that, that I've seen a lot of maps that happen in kind of indoor areas. You see that all the props have uh, shadows enabled here, and you get this kind of really ugly, unnatural shadow colour. It looks really, really bad. I, I'm always a fan of basically turning off prop shadows on just about everything when you're indoors, because it just it just doesn't look right in most cases. But there are obviously exceptions. There always are, but for the most part I really dislike these having shadows enabled indoors and uh, this map uh, is a really good example of why unfortunately because you get these kind of blue shaded shadows when uh, you've got this fire everywhere and it's yeah it just looks really really bad unfortunately you know, shadows is one of the things the source engine doesn't do particularly well uh, real-time shadows I should say uh, maybe Valve can fix that in the next version of the engine so an another thing here which doesn't really look quite right is the transition between the map and the skybox. You can kind of tell when looking out the window, it's very, very obvious where the skybox starts. Uh, the fog transition doesn't look quite right either. You've kind of got this very, very blue fog that kind of covers all the skybox props but doesn't really transition into the map that well. And uh, as we get out into the street you can see that, uh, that there's a lot of very very jarring transitions where essentially there's just giant holes basically which kind of it's a real immersion killer and it, it looks very very ugly and unfortunately it's very easy to spot as well it's not like it's hidden and you have to go looking for it it's it's right in front of you in, in a lot of instances which is a shame you can see here like the map just disappears And yeah, this is probably a case of the author probably mapped out this area and uh, perhaps just didn't have time to finish it off properly before handing it off to Philip. Yeah, you can see here, he's, he's obviously tried to make the transition a bit more uh, seamless by having a kind of a road textured brush in the skybox, but it just doesn't join up correctly at all. The skybox transitions, uh, when you're connect when you're trying to connect brush geometry to skybox geometry can be a real pain in the arse and a, I feel your pain here. Something I've had a lot of trouble with myself in the past. And grenades you can't pick up. I'm sure I've seen that in another map before. I, I forget the name of it right now but yeah it's kind of strange. So yeah, um, another thing that's it's kind of baked in with the issue of just the map being unfinished but uh, visually it's yeah it's really not up to par especially in, in these outdoor areas it's kind of just giant cubes with building textures on it it doesn't sell the effect particularly well this, I like the layout of the actual area though the, the size feels good um, the actual layout of things like roads and the train track down here is nice it's, it just needs some more time in the oven to kind of really bring the visual detail up it could have looked really really nice with just some more time spent on it Again here you can see like the rough edges where things just don't don't look quite right. Some of the things that are quite nice in this map is uh like you've just seen here the way the APC comes around the corner as you walk up to it to kind of push you back. There's some nice kind of herding the player around in this map, usually involving an APC that's done quite well. It happens uh, a couple of times actually. It's quite well done. Now, 
Yeah, but perhaps it's not quite obvious enough that the player has to go into this tunnel here. It's very, very dark. There's nothing really drawing the player in there aside from it's just another route you can take. But this area is already quite open-ended, so it would have been nice to have something in there. Perhaps a light that kind of draws the players in or something like that. Perhaps a train goes by with something on it that catches the player's attention. This area I really like as well. Oh, unfortunately, again, it just feels like the map's completely unfinished because things just do not behave properly. But I do like this area here with the kind of 45, 45 degree bridge going over the train rails. do like that. The map's also very, very quiet in most areas. There's not a lot of ambience. This especially feels very, very strange in that first outside area. Can be very, very, very quiet at times. It's just again, it breaks the illusion of realism even more. This area is better. I, I like the uh, collapsed bridge here with all the kind of broken railings and everything. That's really nice. Actually, looks quite good. Yeah, it's just a shame. You, you can tell the kind of the shell of the map has been mapped out and like the gameplay has been planned, but. It just feels like there just, there just wasn't the time to put into uh, actually finishing it all off, which is a shame. It's one of my one of my pet peeves up here. Look, a padlock. Nope. Yeah, let's let's stop doing this, level designers. Come on now. Half-Life 2 very obviously sets out rules for the game world. Let's start following those rules. If you can't think of another way to bar a door, then let's get more creative. Come on now. I know you can do it. So I do like this uh, kind of underpass area here, it's very, very, very cool. Again, it kind of shows how broken the shadows are in Half-Life, because unfortunately the, the shadow on this helicopter kind of clips through the, uh, the motorway onto the ground when it goes above, which is a shame. So here we are, this is the travelling section. Of course, if you haven't been following the uh, beginningville mapping competition there, players had to design a map where you feel like you're travelling from point A to point B in the first part with some stops along the way for obstacles again uh, let's talk about kind of chase sequences and travelling sequences shall we because uh, I think this map does a great example of kind of how not to do it <laughs> unfortunately uh, as you can see we've just driven off in the car the player's kind of excited, now I've got a car, where am I going to go, this is going to be fun. And the first the first kind of driveway you drive into is a stop almost instantly. I, I think the pacing's quite wrong actually with this section. Uh, I always think that you should be allowed to drive for a bit, perhaps you know, get into a little bit of combat or run away from something before actually being blocked by an obstacle. Just doesn't feel quite right to me. Uh, and another issue is like things being really really fiddly to drive through especially in a chase sequence where I'm sure you've all had it playing games or a driving sequence in an FPS where you're having fun you're having this big chase you know stuff's chasing you and shooting at you you're shooting back and then you have to do some complicated maneuver while in combat in a vehicle and you kind of hit an obstacle and get stuck and that's basically the end the, the immersion is now broken oh I've crashed that sucks. It kind of ruins the uh, the moment of having this big epic chase. And, oh look, a little a little bit of metal sticking out this wall snagged my car, and yeah, it's over. And unfortunately, that's what happens here. You can see here th these doors. Oh my god! <laughs> Whoever decided that they should close by themselves? Just massive massive amounts of rage happening right now <laughs> so let's just skip past all this because yeah 
Another issue here is, of course, that these doors are not lit at all. There should be like a bright light here to kind of so you can actually see what you're doing. It's so annoying to kind of try and work out where the doors are in pitch blackness. So here's another moment with an APC blocking your path. I thought that was excellent timing there. The way you're just about to turn and then he just kind of rams you off the road. And again, this is what I was going back to about being caught on stupid objects while in a chase sequence. Unfortunately, it happens here. You should, you should just be able to run through the entire front of the building. That would have been really cool. I mean, here I've just like, you know what? This car's a pain in the ass. I'm not even going to bother with it even anymore. <laughs> so yeah, if, if the player gets out of the vehicle you've given them for a vehicle chase, then uh, yeah, you know something's wrong, unfortunately. So there's a couple of options of where to go here. Unfortunately, most of the most of the options that are presented are actually just dead ends, which is a shame. It would have been nice to have perhaps a little loop back route with a, a secret in or something like that. But again, I, I'm just going to keep on saying this. It, it, this map just feels like the author ran out of time working on it, so I don't think it's a true reflection of his skill level. If he'd had more time, I'm sure it would have been a lot more polished. Again, you can see here there's just giant chunks of map missing, so it really does feel like just a time issue. Yeah, I mean, who knows, maybe the, the second part of the beginning build competition he goes back and spruces up this map along with adding a second. We'll just have to wait and see, I suppose. It's going to be really interesting to see how the maps progress from here for the second part of the competition. I think uh, the competition format is really excellent for kind of getting mappers to uh, iterate on their work as they go through. It'd be really nice to see if mappers go back and improve their first entries along with adding a second. Now that they've got feedback from everyone on Planet Philip and these videos and other videos, it'd be really interesting to see how they improve. Alright guys, that was Beginningville. Really looking forward to the second part in the series and uh, I'll see you soon.